Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, and today we're going to be talking about what I like to call is the Malky Gardening Method. And what that is, and I've got my notes here in front of me, I usually don't like talking with notes, but I want to make sure I share these five important tips, and the reason and the logic behind it, and I'm going to be including that in the um, notes down below um, the video, so you can actually reference those as well as um, some very important links as well. Uh, to support some of the things I'm discussing here today. But what I wanted to share with this um, Malky gardening method is that you actually introduce it to your garden some native plants specific <laughs> to your area and where you live. Um, for example, we're here in Southern California and what I've got here actually in all of these one gallon sized um, containers next to me are plants that are um, California specific native plants. Um, and the reason and logic behind it before I actually discuss these is we want to actually restore the history. Um, plants have existed, <coughs> these plants have actually existed here in, um, you know, around the world, but I'm actually just discussing these here in Southern California um, that have actually been here for about 40 million years, possibly up to 700 million years ago. And the insects that evolved to these plants are also date back about 400 million years as well. So what we're trying to preserve is, um, is something that existed and has been imprinted for millions and millions of years, whereas like the human ancestors only date back about five to seven million years. We're dealing with plants that have been here for 400 plus million years ago. And the goal and the logic behind it is by planting these plants in your garden, you're actually attracting the bird life, the bees, the hummingbirds, um, the butterflies, and all of these pollinators that'll then improve all of the things you actually want in your garden, <coughs> such as next to me I've got here my Meyer lemon tree um, to my left, which its origins date back to China. Um, I've got here to my right um, my Eureka lemon tree, which is a California native um, lemon, but all of them usually date um, and originated, I believe, all originally in um, between China and I know Spain actually has some roots as well um, with citrus. But um, one other thing I want to share before I continue with this is you may notice um, behind me that the tree trunk is painted in white. And I know some people comment um, on these videos about what kind of rootstock do you have that's white. And what I've actually done here is, and what this product is, it's called Ivory Organics. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint, and it comes dry, and you add water to it, and then you'll just basically paint it on your tree trunk. Um, or at the time of planting, I'll actually put <coughs> one or two teaspoons of the product in a spray bottle, and I'll actually coat the entire plant. It actually creates a dilute sunblock to help um, the plant with sunburn. And I'll actually share this product with you here. You can actually take a look here. And it's basically Ivy Organic. It's three-in-one guard paint, just add water, a natural tree trunk and branch barrier, protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. Use on fruit trees, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs, and it's non-toxic, environmentally safe, and <coughs> organic. So, so this product, so this product's basically an organic paint with organic oils and it basically protects against sunburn, sun scald, insects and rodents from actually damaging your plant to hopefully give it the longest and you know most fruit bearing life. If it's a fruit tree, it could also be applied to ornamental trees. But um, I just wanted to share this product being, again, it's an organic product and something that, that can actually be used to increase the longevity of your um, valued um, trees in your garden. To continue forward with the, with the gar, um, so continuing forward now with the Malky gardening method, what I have here are now a variety of plant species. These were all um, found um, at a special um, nursery that actually dedicated only about less than 5% of their garden to native species. And so we're here in Southern California, so I asked for a specific Southern California plants, which I'm going to go over again momentarily. Um, but again, the goal is to actually attract the wildlife, the birds, the bees, the insects, the, um, the lizards, the, um, the wildlife that actually um, exists in your garden. Your goal is to introduce at least one native species to your area. So if you're in Southern California, you want to get a Southern California native species. If you're in Hawaii, you get some Hawaiian species. Talking about Hawaii, um, and you'll actually find research on this as well, when you actually go and you visit the waterfalls and the, um, and the nature that's out there, about 90% of the plants that are actually in Hawaii are actually non-native um, plants that have actually um, been brought in and in introduced by the ships and the people um, that have migrated there and planted the plants that they want in their garden and then it just spread. So you want to make sure that you actually, um, 
you know, try to support your local wildlife by planting the plants that are actually specific to it. And what will happen is you'll actually um, attract <coughs> more bees, more pollinators, whether they're bees, butterflies, or um, hummingbirds, or any other things, that'll then go from these plants to your tomatoes that you have in your garden. I've got some zucchini plants over there, my citrus um, that are behind me. Um, and all of them will actually um, be actually benefited by the increased pollination. I want to um, review my notes here. So the first thing I said is plant the things you'll, that you'll consume. So the first thing is you want to do is you want to put the things in your garden that you actually want. For me, I want my lemon trees. Lemons are actually um, excellent um, citrus for um, supporting your immunity um, and their antiseptic um, qualities, which are um, good for your health. I've actually got my squash plants, which are um, this, which assist with um, any inflammation, and I know there's a lot more benefits as well. My tomatoes, they actually um, are anti-cancer and um, and have lycopene, which um, also help against... You gotta stop So it. I've actually introduced, so the, step number one is plan all the things that you'll actually consume. I wanna make sure that your water is going, one, to either support the food that you and your family, um, your pets, your livestock will consume, um, and secondly, your water is going to support the plants that actually belong in your um, territory, in your region, the plants that are native to your area. Um, so again, we talked about Southern California. Um, you have Hawaii. So if you're in Hawaii, you plant your Hawaiian native plants. If you're in Arizona, you plant your Arizona native plants. If you're in um, Hong Kong, you plant your Hong Kong um, native plants. And then you can go and plant your Meyer lemon tree as well alongside of it, your Eureka lemon tree. Let me show you a couple other plants as well. So I've got also here um, my zucchini plants, and zucchini are actually also known for being, <laughs> the benefits of zucchini is that they're um, anti-inflammatory among a lot of other health benefits as well. Let me show you some more. We got here um, the, fig, the fig tree, and you can notice every leaf is actually supporting a fruit. Let me show you some more. And then we're here next to um, my early grill tomato <coughs> variety, which were actually grown vertically. And you can see here, um, tomatoes actually have the lycopenes and other um, anti-cancer agents, which are also good for your health. And the wonderful thing about growing things at home is that you know there's no pesticides on there, and you know you're actually using no chemical fertilizers. Hopefully you're growing everything organically, which helps support the soil um, microorganisms, <coughs> which then grow beneficial and healthy plants. <coughs> Let me show you some more, and let's go back to our spot. And then this here, we've also got some fresh strawberries um, picked from the garden. Let's continue. So step number one, grow the things you want. Grow the things you'll enjoy, grow the things your family will enjoy. Step two, plant at least one native plant species. So I'm surrounded here by five. So we're actually going to um, be planting these five plants throughout the garden. Most of them will actually be behind me and I'll explain where and how. It looks pretty busy back here, but I'll explain to you in just a minute. The third thing is when you actually plant these is to um, fertilize, for example, your fruit trees up to three times a year. I'll give you a video link down below where I discuss the importance of fertilizing in spring, summer, and fall, and typically not in the winter. So I'll give you the link to that, but make sure when it comes to your native plants, they've grown and have become accustomed to your area for 400 million years without use. So you do not fertilize your plants, do not put pesticides on them. If you actually see insects, such as I found here on my, on my milkweed plant, if you take a look here. So this one is called Asclepius, which is the um, genus name for milkweed. And then the specific species is called um, Ericocarpa. Car Ericocarpa. And this here is a milkweed, but take a look at all the insects that are in here. Take a look at all the damage underneath the leaf, and then if you can actually see these golden aphids. But these aphids are gonna become the prey for the predators. We've got praying mantis, we've got ladybugs, we've got so many other things back here that'll eat it. And we wanna keep things naturally, because ultimately what's gonna happen is the milkweed, the milkweed plant is going to attract um, the monarch butterfly. And I've got actually behind me a ton of milkweed plants which we're actually going to be removing and I'll explain to you why and I'm actually doing a whole specific video on not planting the tropical milkweed which I'm going to discuss it a little bit further in a second but 
monarch butterflies can smell this plant from, and the research supports, from anywhere from five miles to as far as 20 miles away. So we're here in Hollywood Hills. We're talking about the butterflies out in Beverly Hills, which is seven miles away from here. You can actually smell this plant, come <coughs> over here, lay the eggs, caterpillars will start growing, um, turn into chrysalis, which will ultimately turn into more monarch butterflies that'll continue on its migration down to Mexico. But the problem is with tropical milkweed is unlike the native milkweed species that actually die back in the fall and winter and come back again in the spring, is the tropical milkweed stays green year round and that carries a spore called the OE spore, which I'm gonna go into more detail in another video. Um, so you can actually find that link down below. Um, but that spore actually carries on the plants in the fall and the winter, and if there's any monarch butterflies in your area, they actually um, land on the plant, pick up the spores, lay their eggs, and the caterpillars eat it, and the cycle continues. Um, so you're actually doing a lot of harm. They're saying actually in, um, in North America, um, anywhere from about, um, actually here in California, they're saying that it's about 30 to 30%, 40% of the monarch butterflies actually have this OE spore in them so it's actually contaminating their <laughs> populations um, and this tropical milkweed is part to blame um, I actually started this effort about three years ago and I planted a whole variety of different um, species of milkweed this here obviously is the strongest the best performing it looks the best and actually all the nurseries are selling them as well everywhere I go now you can find it but the problem is that it doesn't die back in the in the in the winter and in the fall and it may be contributing to more damage than good so um, Please do your part to educate your nurseries and, and get them to hopefully go with more of the native species. So wherever you live, try to find the milkweed that's specific to your area and plant those. And that'll actually be helping the populations far better than planting um, this tropical milkweed, which is actually native to Mexico and not native to anywhere, North America or Canada, um, United States or America. So, um, you know, please consider not buying the tropical milkweed and help me with my efforts to hopefully get these out of the nurseries and, and again trying to get the native species that are specific to your area as there's a lot of varieties that you can grow and again I'll put another link um, down below where you can actually find <coughs> the right milkweeds to actually grow in your garden. So anyways, so we just talked about one, plant the things you'll consume, two, plant at least one native species, three, fertilize organically and only on the plants that you'll consume. You're not going to be fertilizing your, your native plants. Um, four. Do not use any pesticides or fertilizers on your native plants ever. And five, use an organic-based pesticide if necessary, something like neem oil or spinosad if you're going to use any pest control measures in your garden, um, primarily on your, on your, on your food or, or fruit trees. And again, you should be leaving pesticides. Even neem oil and spinosad can actually damage the biology and the life that's happening here. Like say, let's say, for example, we're trying to actually spray um, this plant to you, and I'll actually show you these aphids one more time. But if you put spinosad or neem oil on this, we can actually clean this all up. But the bad part is if the monarch butterfly laid an egg, which are very difficult to spot, you've actually just killed the monarch butterfly, um, you know, child as well. So you don't want to put any, any chemicals on your plant, whether it's organic or non-organic. Um, but if you do need to use a, a, a fertilizer, or I mean a pesticide, do be sure to use organically um, as the damage to the biology of your soil, the garden, and um, and everything else is far less impactful um, than if you don't. So those are your five tips and all of that will be actually down below. One other tip is gardening is a science and there's more than one way to get to the right road. So we're gonna be experimenting with all these plants. Some of them may fail, some of them may succeed. Um, keep on trying is the goal. You're, again, gardening is a science and, um, and there's a lot of ways to actually achieve, to achieve great results in your garden. So experiment with soil, experiment with light, experiment with all these different things in your garden. So I'm share with you some of the plants that I'm actually going to be putting into my garden today and hopefully this will inspire you to do the same. Maybe you'll like some of these colors or varieties um, that I've actually selected. Um, so take a look at this and take a look at how beautiful and colorful this is. This is again a, a California native. It's called the California Romero, also known as the Woolly Blue Curls. So take a look at how pretty that is. This is supposed to attract both um, hummingbirds and bees and butterflies. We've all obviously got and we've already discussed this. Um, Asclepedes aerocarpa, which is the milkweed. Um, and this here is um, specific to um, California. 
I've got here behind me a salvia known as the Allen Chickering variety. This is a blue sage. Um, so we're actually gonna be adding this as well. The next plant I have here is called the Bowman's California Fuchsia. Again, another huge attractor for hummingbirds. So um, we have that as well here in the garden. And the next one we've got is Yellow Rock Rose. Take a look at how beautiful and how gray, grayish blue that plant looks. And the last one is we've got Buckwheat. And take a look at these blossoms as well. So we've got all of these different pollinators, all of these different pollinators um, that will actually be attracting the bees, the butterflies, the hummingbirds, and so much more. Um, and we're not talking about just monarch butterflies. This will be attracting a variety of butterflies that actually grow and are specific to our area. Um, so again, be careful with putting any pesticides or any fertilizers on your plants because the, the, the caterpillars are going to come. The, um, the whole life cycle, both the predators and the prey are going to come into your garden and you're going to enjoy um, just seeing the entire life cycle and, and, and the balance of biology in your backyard. Um, anyways, so we just explained how monarch butterflies can actually smell their milkweed plants from anywhere from 5 to 20 miles away depending on the research you find. Um, and honeybees can actually find their plants from anywhere from 1 to 2 miles away. Their sense of smell is about 100 times stronger than humans. So. Um, you know, so let your nature, let your 400, ye 400 million years of evolution actually work for you in your garden. Um, and again, that's my tip that I'm hoping to share with you today. There's a lot of ways to actually succeed at your garden. Um, and if anything fails, just try moving into a different part of your garden. Experiment with the light, experiment with the soil, experiment. Um, gardening is a science and, you know, every day is, you know, something to learn in your garden. And, and your garden has a lot to teach you as well. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if so, be sure to like it. Um, if you've also enjoyed it, share it with your friends. I'm hoping you can share this concept with um, your garden club meetings um, wherever you live throughout the world. Um, I actually lead the gardening club meetings here in the Hollywood Hills and um, I'm hoping you can share um, all of this educational informative um, information. And again, most importantly, subscribe down below so that way you don't miss out on all of our other videos that we put out on average once a week. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.